So this is a case of 64 year old man presenting with the right middle ear mass and uh, this is the only image uh, provided here. So as you can see, uh, that uh, this is the uh, CT in geography image and it is showing a vessel that is traveling anteriorly within the medial aspect here, it is traveling anteriorly within the uh, medial aspect of the right middle ear cavity and uh, there is absence of the bony plate that normally uh, separates the uh, petrous carotid artery from the tympanic cavity. These are the uh, angiography images. This is the digital subtraction angiography image and it is showing the uh, course of the distal right uh, cervical internal carotid artery which is more uh, this is the course which is more lateral than normal and it has got a reverse 7 appearance there is a reverse 7 appearance to this uh, artery that is the distal right cervical ICA and uh, this reverse 7 appearance is quite typical uh, for aberrant internal carotid artery and uh, also you can see that the caliber of the distal uh, cervical and uh, the petrous ICA is smaller uh, than normal. So this caliber here you can see that it is smaller than normal. So this is a very typical uh, picture imaging picture of aberrant internal carotid artery and in the differentials uh, you can add any pulsatile red middle ear mass like glomus tympanicum or dehiscent jugular bulb. Next is a six-year-old patient presenting with the congenital oral atresia and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see here uh, that uh, there is a, here you can see that there is membranous external canal atresia uh, with a narrowed tympanic annulus. The tympanic annulus is narrowed and uh, this is best seen here on the coronal image that there is narrowing of the tympanic annulus here okay then the tympanic annulus is narrowed here and uh, also there is no membranous external canal and uh, there is abnormal fusion of the malleus and incus here there is abnormal fusion of the malleus and incus which is which was confirmed at surgery and the facial nerve, however, is in a normal anatomic position. So this is a case of uh, external auditory canal atresia. And uh, in the differentials, uh, you can uh, these images are quite diagnostic for external canal auditory canal atresia. And uh, definitely, this should be the only diagnosis in this case. Next is 18 months old child presenting with speech difficulty and floor of the mouth mass. These are the images. Now as you can see that uh, there is a very, very well defined mass here. This is the well defined mass here in this image as well. This is the well defined mass within the left sublingual space okay, which is extending uh, to the midline anteriorly here. It is extending to the midline anteriorly and uh, also note that the collection is lateral to the genioglossus muscle. Okay, so this is that this is that mass this is that mass and uh, this mass is lateral to the genioglossus muscles. These are the genioglossus muscles and it, it is lateral to this genioglossus muscle and on T1 and T2 weighted MRI uh, you can see that it has the, the internal signal characteristics of this mass is very similar uh, to the CSF. Also on the post contrast sequence there is a thin rim of enhancement here you can see that there is a thin rim of enhancement around this mass on the post contrast sequence and on T1 and T2 weighted MRIs uh, this uh, mass has the same signal intensity as that of CSF here. So there is no extension of this mass into the submandibular space 
uh, which is again here you can see this is the coronal image and there's no extension of this mass into the submandibular space on the coronal stair sequence. So this is a case of ranula. It is simple ranula. Okay, this is a case of uh, simple ranula. And uh, in the differentials, you can add epidermoid or dermoid or lymphangioma or abscess in it. Next is 53-year-old woman uh, presenting with the proptosis and decreased vision in the right eye. And these are the images. Now, as you can see, uh, that there is a mass, okay, there is a mass here which is surrounding the right optic nerve and it is also causing a, a mild proptosis in this region, okay. This is the mass which is surrounding the right optic nerve. On the post cadolinium uh, fat suppressed, here on the post cadolinium fat suppressed uh, D1 weighted images, we can see that there is circumferential enhancement around the optic nerve. Okay, so you can see here that there is circumferential enhancement. This is the optic nerve, and this is that circumferential enhancement that we are talking about around the optic nerve. So the right optic nerve can be identified as a separate structure and uh, it is separate from the mass. We can see very clearly that this is the right optic nerve and this is that circumferential enhancement around it. So this is this can be uh, quite separately visualized or identified that this optic nerve is separate from the mass. And this mass is uh, iso intense to muscle on the uh, you know coronal stir sequence here. This is iso to the muscles. These are the muscles and this mass is iso to these muscles. And on the post contrast sequences, we can see that there is uniform enhancement in this mass. The optic sheath between the globe and the tumor is also dilated. Okay, this is the optic sheath between the globe and the tumor and it's also dilated. So this is a case of optic nerve uh, sheath meningioma. This is optic nerve sheath meningioma. And uh, in the differentials, you can add optic glioma or inflammatory pseudotumor or lymphoma or metastasis. Next is a 14 months old girl who is presenting uh, with neck swelling for two months. Now, these are the provided images. As you can see, that there are several uh, rim enhancing, thick walled, low attenuation uh, fluid collections in the neck bilaterally also including the retropharyngeal space here okay so th this is the retropharyngeal space so these are all those several rim enhancing thick walled low attenuation fluid collections and uh, these lesions they lie along uh, major lymph node chains and uh, there is very minimal reticulation in the surrounding fat there's minimal reticulation in the surrounding fat and there are none of the typical inflammatory features uh, which are seen in pyogenic adenitis. So this is a case of inflammatory adenitis secondary to mycobacterium avium complex MEC infection and uh, in the differentials you can add uh, other bacterial or fungal lymphadenitis, partially treated superative adenitis and cystic tumors like squamous cell carcinoma. Next is 74 year old woman uh, presenting with the red mass behind the eardrum and uh, hearing loss and uh, pulsatile tinnitus. These are the images. Now starting with the axial CT scan uh, the, through the temporal bone it shows uh, here it shows the bone erosion around the jugular foramen. Okay, so around the jugular foramen, there is this uh, bone erosion and uh, there is a small mass here in the hypotempenum. Okay, this is the small mass in the hypotempenum and uh, the carotid canal is actually separate from this lesion. Okay, here, here this is the small mass and uh, the carotid canal is uh, separate from the lesion. The MRI images uh, show a mass in the jugular foramen 
and the middle ear as well. So this is the mass which is present in the jugular foramen and the middle ear. Tiny flow voids can also be seen in this lesion on the pre-contrast T1 weighted MRI and in the T2 weighted MRI as well we can see that there are tiny flow voids here. So this is a typical case of glomus uh, jugular tympanicum and uh, in the differentials uh, you can add glomus tympanicum, aberrant carotid artery, meningioma of jugular foramen, schwannoma of jugular foramen and pseudo lesion that is normal jugular bulb. So next is 65 year old man presenting with nasal congestion and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see that this is the CT scan and it shows the uh, complete opacification of the left maxillary sinus by heterogeneous high attenuation material. Also you can see that there is a marked thickening of the sinus walls compared to the right side. Here you can see that there is marked thickening of the sinus walls. This is the high attenuation material which is uh, heterogeneous and it is uh, uh, opacifying, completely opacifying the left maxillary sinus. On MRI, you can see uh, that uh, the material centrally, central uh, material within the sinus is markedly hypointense. This is markedly hypointense on T2 weighted MRI and uh, it is hyperintense on T1 weighted MRI. Okay, so this is T1 weighted MRI and it is hyperintense here and it is hypointense here on T2 weighted MRI. Also, uh, you can see that on the post contrast sequence this is there is peripheral sinus enhancement uh, there is peripheral enhancement of this mass but uh, the bulk of the material is actually non enhancing so this is a case of allergic fungal sinusitis and um, and the differentials uh, you can add chronic sinusitis with inspissated secretions fungal mycetoma and trauma and sinonasal blood Next is case of a 12 months old boy presenting with leukocoria and this is the only image provided which is quite uh, suggestive of a diagnosis. However, let us proceed with the descriptive findings. So this is the axial CT scan which is showing a calcified mass in the left globe. This is the calcification and this is the mass in the left globe. So in the left globe and uh, it is accompanying uh, this is the retinal detachment. This is the retinal detachment here. It is accompanying this retinal detachment, this mass. And uh, how, uh, however, the globes are of similar sizes almost. Okay, so this is a case of retinoblastoma. This is a typical imaging picture of retinoblastoma. And in the differentials, you can add toxocariasis, astrocytic hematoma, and PHPV. Next is 33 year old woman uh, who is presenting uh, with right shoulder pain and weakness in her right arm and that has worsened over the last three months. So these are the imaging findings. Now, as you can see that uh, there is a well circumscribed here uh, rounded mass along the right brachial plexus. And this mass is uh, hyper intense on T2, and uh, it is uh, this mass is hyper intense on T2, and uh, also it is uh, enhancing heterogeneously uh, on the post contrast sequences. You know, this is the post contrast sequence, this is the post contrast sequence, and uh, there is heterogeneous enhancement of this lesion. This mass is extending back along the right uh, C7 and uh, C8 nerve roots here. This is uh, extending to the right C7 and C8 nerve roots with expansion of the here. You can see that th this is causing expansion of the respective neural foramina here. Okay, In the axial sequences, this is quite clear that this mass is causing the expansion of the neural foramina. And this mass is also abutting uh, the right subclavian artery uh, without narrowing it. Okay, so this is abutting uh, the right subclavian artery, however, it is not narrowing it. This is the right subclavian artery, and it's, this mass is abutting it. So, this is a case of brachial plexus neurofibroma, 
and uh, in the differentials you can add desmoid tumor or metastatic neoplasm or lymphoma next is uh, a child presenting with palpable scalp lesion uh, the, uh, the patient has a history of fall uh, from second story window four months earlier and uh, these are the images now as you can see as you can see here that there is a sharply marginated defect in the left parietal bone here okay this is that sharply marginated defect on x-ray and here on CT scan bone window you can see this is the sharply marginated defect here in the left parietal bone okay it is also evident here a small extra axial leptomeningeal cyst here this is the small extra axial leptomeningeal cyst which is adjacent to the fracture here a small leptomeningeal cyst is adjacent to the fracture and uh, both bone defects and uh, the cyst are at the site of prior fracture so there is a fracture here which was not detected most likely and uh, then the child developed the leptomeningeal cyst here so this is a case of leptomeningeal cyst uh, that is also called growing fracture uh, following post trauma and uh, in the differentials you can add unhealed fracture with adjacent encephalomalacia langer hand cell histiocytosis and metastasis of course now another case of a patient presenting with small right eye the only history provided here is the patient has a small right eye now, as you can see in these images that uh, the right eye is small that uh, it is definitely small compared to the left eye as you can see here the right eye is small and uh, there is a focal change uh, in contour of the posterior pole here there is a focal change here in the contour of the posterior pole and uh, there is a lobulated cystic lesion posterior to the right globe this is that lobulated cystic lesion the left globe also has a focal bulge here in the posterior sclera this this is the focal bulge in the posterior sclera however uh, there is no abnormal enhancement in this lesion so this is the uh, contrast enhanced sequence and there is uh, no abnormal enhancement here so you can say that this is the case of bilateral coloboma in charge syndrome and uh, in the differentials you can add lymphangioma of the orbit that is right orbit lymphangioma and staphylomas Next is case of a 55 year old man presenting with decreased peripheral vision in one eye in the past few days and these are the images. Now you can see that uh, here you can see uh, this is the CT scan, axial CT scan and uh, there is subtle high density in the posterior aspect of the vitreous of the right globe you compare it to the left this is the, there is subtle hyperdensity here on the sagittal here on the sagittal t1 weighted mri and uh, this is the t2 weighted mri and uh, this is the flare sequence and they both show v-shaped hyperintensity this is that v-shaped v-shaped intensity along the posterior globe v-shaped hyperintensity along the uh, in the posterior globe uh, along the posterior globe with its apex towards the optic disc and its anterior margins at the ciliary bodies okay so these are the anterior margins they are at the ciliary bodies its apex is at the optic nerve disc so this is a case of a retinal detachment it's a very typical imaging presentation of retinal detachment and in the differentials you can add uh, choroidal or hyaloid membrane detachment and persistent uh, hyperplastic primary vitreous coarse disease and uh, or any ocular neoplasm next is 58 year old woman uh, undergoing elective cerebral angiography these are the only images that are provided here now as you can see that injection of the right common carotid artery here is showing the alternating narrowing and dilatation this is the alternating narrowing and dilatation which is called the typical string of beads appearance in the mid cervical in the mid cervical internal carotid artery 
So, this is a very typical imaging presentation of fibromuscular dysplasia. This is a case of fibromuscular dysplasia and in the differentials you can add standing waves that is normal transient contrast related vessel wall corrugation, arterial dissection and Takayasu arthritis. Next is 34 year old woman uh, presenting with headaches and uh, these are the images. Now, as you can see uh, that this is the CT scan, ideal scan, showing a region of bone destruction here along the left petrochlival synchondrosis. Left petrochlival synchondrosis is showing the region of bone destruction. And uh, also you can see uh, that there are calcifications here, that there are calcifications present in the region of uh, bone destruction which is actually suggesting the chondroid matrix. Now the MR sequences, uh, they show hyper intense signals on detuvated MRI. This is the detuvated MRI and it, this lesion is hyper intense. It is hypo intense on T1 weighted MRI. And uh, on the post contrast sequence, we can see that there's moderate enhancement within this lesion. There is moderate enhancement and the enhancing soft tissue is uh, extending into uh, the prepontine cistern. This enhancing soft tissue is extending into the prepontine here. It's extending into the prepontine cistern. So this is a typical picture of chondrosarcoma, uh, which is low-grade vexoid chondrosarcoma. And in the differentials, you can add uh, chordoma, meningioma, myeloma, metastasis, and nasopharyngeal cancer. Next is 36-year-old uh, patient presenting with decreased vision in the left eye. And these are the images. Now you can see that there is a very well defined, well defined here, left intraocular mass, and it is abutting both the ciliary body and the posterior iris. It's abutting the ciliary body and the posterior iris. And on the post contrast sequence, we can see that there is peripheral zone of enhancement, which is iso intense uh, on the pre contrast uh, images. Here you can see that this mass is iso intense. Here, it is iso intense on the pre contrast T1 weighted image, and uh, it is hyper intense on T2 weighted image. And here you can see that uh, there is the peripheral zone of enhancement in this uh, mass. And uh, here you can see that it is iso intense on the T1 weighted pre contrast sequence. So this is a case of ocular melanoma. And in the differentials, you can add metastasis, choroidal hemangioma, and medulloepithelioma.